Hey everyone, welcome to Obscure Slooper Presents. Today, let me take you back to the wild and crazy world of 1992. This is the Buffy the Vampire Slayer movie. Joss Whedon, creator of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, had an idea for a screenplay where he took the blonde that always got killed in the horror movies and spun things around so she instead kicks him butt. When the character was resurrected in the 1997 TV series, a combination of great writing, a mix of horror and humor, and great supporting characters made it one of the most successful shows on television. The movie, however, well, it wasn't much of a success. The producers wanted more of a light-hearted comedy, and the script was heavily rewritten, so much so that Joss Whedon left the production. The film is proof that execution is everything, and the same concept can go very well, or it can flop tremendously. So let's see just how bad things can get in Buffy the Vampire Slayer. For those not familiar with the mythology, it goes a little something like this. In every generation, a slayer is born, a girl chosen to fight vampires and kick some ass for good. The slayer is trained by our watcher in the ways of ass kickery until the slayer usually dies an untimely death and a new slayer is chosen. Our main character is Buffy, who happens to be a slayer, and that's all you need to know. The movie tries to explain the story in the most retarded way possible, with a flashback scene of a slayer and her watcher wearing silly rental costumes. The characters are played by Christy Swanson and Donald Sutherland, who also play Buffy and her watcher Merrick. I guess the movie is saying that all the slayers and watchers look exactly the same in every generation, which would be pretty crappy storytelling if they ever explained it. They also say every slayer has the same birthmark or something, but that's dropped pretty quickly. By the way, did I mention this was 1992? No sense of history. I have no sense of history. He wears a brown tie. That uh, that doesn't make any sense, Buffy. Guys, oh. what's the stitch? I'm bored. What do you think? Please. Yes, your eyes don't deceive you. That is, in fact, Hilary Swank. She's won Academy Awards, Oscars, and Golden Globes. But she still has to say her first movie was Buffy the Vampire Slayer. What are we oh, doing? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Why don't we go see a movie? Where? On the bus. Oh, yes. No way. We're really going to have to listen to this for an hour and a half? Really? It's here where we're introduced to Merrick, Buffy's watcher. I don't really know why he's acting creepy, or really why he was hanging out at the mall in the first place, since he seems surprised to see Buffy, but maybe he's a mall walker. At the movie theater, we're introduced to Buffy's love interest. Is that really Luke Perry? Ah uh, yes, the Luke Perry craze. It's truly a timeless movie. And he's only 30 years young. <laughs> Oh, and he's also joined by David Arquette, who makes his living playing David Arquette. You know, it's awful nice of them to let all these 30-year-olds retake high school. Why am I in this movie again? Half ah, bucket. Jeffrey, I don't want to sound sexist or anything, but can I borrow her? Andy. Yeah, just put your ass in his face and then get offended when he makes a comment. Because you're modest. Dopey McDoofus is walking around next to, uh, the random carousel that is running for some reason and runs into a vampire. And as icing on the cake, this vampire is played by Paul Rubens. Yes, that Paul Rubens. Everybody wants to be cool, but doing it with crack isn't just wrong. It could be dead wrong. As stupid as it sounds, he is actually the highlight of the movie. The apparent cause of death was a severe neck wound that resembled, in the words of one bystander, a really gross hickey. Do they just live in a world full of morons? Is everyone like this in this universe? We also briefly see Buffy's parents, who really like their pastels. Kiss noise. Well-rounded characters? What's that? Ah, oh, crap. Did we really need this essential scene again? Okay, so it sort of sets up the backstory about the main villain having a history with past slayers, or at least one anyway, but what the hell difference does it make? It's not like Buffy knows him, it's not like it's essential that we knew that Paul Rubens was there with his incredibly fake beard. What's the point? <laughs> Lothos and his magical power of ventriloquism. Oh, Rutger Hauer, is there anything you can't do? It turns out that the flashback is also a dream that Buffy is having. If she remembers what happened to that Slayer, wouldn't she remember Donald Sutherland popping up there as well? She doesn't think it's weird that she saw the same guy at the mall? When you rise, we will claim this place as our own. Rubies will drip from your lips. So, are you going to explain what happened to the villain, maybe? Is he injured, or...? It has to be a socially conscious theme. Yeah, one that reflects the students' growing awareness of and involvement in the world around them. Downer! Okay, you can't just yell random words and that means they're hip kids from the valley. They go to the local hangout and see Luke Perry and David Arquette there. You guys are thrashed. That would explain the slurred speech. 
Oh, what charming rogues they are. I know I love guys who are constantly drunk and haven't bathed in three days. I'm Pike. This is Benny. You're the guys from the movie. We hate you guys. Like we care, I'm sure. Boo-hoo. The War of the Imbeciles. Who will win? I got something for you. She wasted my dog. Um, impressive? Pike and Benny stumble drunkenly through the night and discuss charming things like who they would bone. But her yabos scoff in gravity. <laughs> yabos and scoff in the same sentence. It was a different time. Benny is taken away by Paul Rubens, but luckily for Pike, Merrick happens to be cruising around looking for more victims, I guess. I suppose he couldn't help Benny since he was a whole four feet away, but whatever. Take that ball to the hoop. Who? Right. Yeah. Okay, I like that. Bye. Okay, guys, keep pretending to practice. Bye! Christy Swanson's stunt double stays behind to do some gymnastics when Merrick shows up. Where the hell did you come from? That was very impressive, the, the, the tumbling. I was looking for you, actually. Get out while you can, Buffy! You should have been taught, prepared. But I wasn't certain until just now that it was you. Um, why wasn't he certain? Oh, you mean the Slayer that looks the same every time? You weren't sure if it was her? I've been searching everywhere for you, Buffy. Run! Go! You still have time! So you come with me now, to the graveyard. My trust fund's in the graveyard? Yeah, go ahead. Go with him, Buffy. Let me get this straight, okay? You want me to go to the graveyard with you because I'm the chosen one and there are vampires? Yes. Great pitch there, Merrick. Did you ever dream that you were someone else, Buffy? A Magyar peasant girl, perhaps? An Indian princess? A slave? Here's where the mythology of this movie gets me. Is she supposed to be the descendant of the Slayer line? Reincarnation? Is a new Slayer born as soon as the other one dies, or are there just a bunch of Christy Swansons running around? And if they look like Christy Swanson every time, then does that mean that the Slave Slayer was a black Christy Swanson, or the Indian Princess was an Indian Christy Swanson? Are there a bunch of Merricks as well? I don't understand. So Buffy goes with Merrick to the graveyard, and they wait for a vampire to rise. Ew, the poor wire work. Buffy! Good effort there, Merrick. Buffy kills the vampires and we move on. Pike is asleep at his place when Benny, now a vampire, shows up outside his window. This weird guy gave me a ride home. I thought he was going to hit on me. Well, it was Merrick. You're probably not that far off. Pike notices that Benny probably shouldn't be floating and all and tells him to get lost. Let me in, Pike. I'm hungry. Yeah, not helping your case there, buddy. You go to school tomorrow and act normally. Don't let anyone know you know what's happening. Wow, lines taken straight out of the pedophile handbook. Rucker Howard, no! <laughs> Meanwhile, Paul Rubens has kidnapped one of the Valley Girls. I'm the fruitiest vampire in all the land. Why did the edges of his cape float like that? Is he being held up by an invisible ghost? Buffy shows up in the girls' locker room for cheerleading practice when, okay, seriously, Merrick, that is not okay. <gasps> Buffy tells him that she's not up to being a slayer, and he agrees. There is one thing. No, 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 no. Somebody call the cops! All I want to do is graduate from high school, go to Europe, marry Christian Slater, and die. Timeless! You come along and tell me that I'm a member of the Harry Mole Club so you can throw things at me? It was necessary. No, it wasn't. <laughs> you didn't even break a nail. Um, did we miss the part where she changed her mind? What we need now is some montage music. Buffy is walking down an alley at night by herself, just because. She starts to get some menstrual cramps. Uh, yeah, that's her version of a spidey sense. And what do you know, she's attacked by a guy in ridiculous makeup. Ah! Toaster caked him! <laughs> Exposition time! Merrick explains to Buffy what his role is as a watcher, while at the same time not explaining a damn thing. I train girls to be slayers. I have done so for a hundred lives. Um, how? And I must not interfere, 
even if I want to. Why? You just keep on living the same old life over and over? Huh? Yes, uh, until... Till what? Till there aren't any more vampires? Then what? Oh, then maybe I'll go to heaven. But I thought... I don't understand! Pike is trying to leave town when his van breaks down and he's attacked by vampires. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> life or death situations. He ends up ripping off Reuben's arm and crashing into a tree. Kill him a lot. To death? Puffy rescues him from the vampires and takes him home. Why? Who knows? You find yourself babbling incoherently to a strange man. Are you calling me a man? You're 27, Luke. Let it go. Lothos bitches at Reuben for letting Pike and the others go, all the while looking fabulous. Project Runway Marathon, here I come. At the basketball game, we suddenly see McDoofus again, and he's a vampire now. Go, team, go. They don't notice that with the years. <laughs> no one notices that either, the floating. Take it, man. Hi, Ben Affleck. Buffy notices that McDoofus is a vampire and tries to take him down. Knowing that she's the Slayer now, he takes off. She goes after him so he can't tell other vampires about her. You, uh, you realize that Rubens already saw you fighting those other vampires, right? Boogity boogity boogity! Ha <laughs> I love being a vampire! Man, Swanson's stunt double is really clocking in the hours. Ha <laughs> ha! Ruler, it's me! Remember me? Buffy! Nom nom nom, this scenery is delicious! Pike stakes the guy, and let's face it, if Luke Perry can get you, you're not a very good vampire. This extra also just dances around until he's knocked over. They kill the vampires and go to look for Merrick, but instead find Lothos there. Look at me. I wouldn't do it, Buffy. He's just gonna ask you about your hair conditioner and try to paint your nails. This guy's a blood-sucking fiend. Would be wagging that jaw of yours while I'm biting it off. Are you addressing I? Coming this summer, Luke Perry in Hamlet. Lothos is about to kill Buffy when Merrick jumps in. Not this one! I must say! <laughs> Don't not Merrick! Who will creep around our high schools now? Dust, dust. We're leaving. I'm with Paul Rubens on this one. Why are you leaving again? I don't know what they're so upset for. Hasn't he been born a hundred times or something? Didn't they say he wouldn't rest until there's no vet? Oh, he's dead, isn't he? So long, Merrick. We'll always remember the good times. Buffy shows up to help decorate for the dance, um, seems a little unimportant what with a vampire being after you, and has a falling out with her dumbass friends. Pike tries to convince Buffy to slay vampires again, but all she wants to do is go to the dance. Benny overhears them talking about her being a slayer because he happens to be having his picture taken in a photo booth. No, really, that's actually what he was doing. Things are looking bad for Buffy when her boyfriend breaks up with her at the dance. There's only one thing that can cure a girl's broken heart, and that's Luke Perry. Man, I hate it when my dad shows up at the dances. I crashed your party. How shallow. I learned all my creeping skills from Merrick. <laughs> Before this can get too schmaltzy, vampires crash the party. Buffy doesn't seem too heartbroken that her friends are dying. She decides to go outside and fight the vampires. Hey, Buff! Thanks, Pinocchio. Well, it's a good thing they're attacking one at a time, or she'd be screwed. The vampires go inside anyway, and Benny shows up to fight Pike. Come on, play like a man. You're losing it, David Arquette. Admit it, Buffy. Aren't there times when you just feel less than fresh? Ah, Buffy, a cavalcade of menstrual jokes. Okay, so all of his one-liners aren't that funny, but the funniest scene in the movie comes from him. <laughs> Joined? Please. You stupid little bitch! Oh heavens, you dirty little mink! This is your defense. Please. Your puny faith? No. 
My keen fashion sense. <laughs> Buffy? No! No! No, no, let her in! They'll kill us! Please keep her out now! Once again, she won two Oscars. But Lothos is back, bitches, and more fabulous than ever. I haven't finished with you, bitch. <laughs> I'm the berry, motherfucker! Oops. He was buried in a rainbow flag. Did I do all of that? So was it his intention to act stone the whole time? Oh well, the day is saved and they ride off into the sunset. In the end, Buffy wasn't that bad of a movie. It didn't really hold up that well, especially considering how well the show was done, but it was cheesy, it was camp, and it was fun. See you next time. Bye, Jeremiah. I'm going to the store. See you later. Faster, please. Okay. I am going to punch you in the face. Go to the camera. I did not look at the camera. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. No, Kimi, you're ruining the shot. Rubbish. Right.